Hey everybody, ampreparaguy.com, 203-892-4119. There's my website and my phone number. So, we have another TL922 that just came in. This one actually needs a band switch, and it needed a Zener diode. I haven't replaced that yet for the biasing. So, I'm going to go over how I replace one when I get one in for a repair that needs one. So, this switch is from Multitech Industries down in New Jersey. Nice people down there, good company. They make a lot of nice switches and other stuff. So this one, as you can see, the contacts over here are to add more padding capacitance on the plate tune air variable when you're on 80 or 160 meters. And they're just blown apart. Usually happens when you have an open on the output or a crazy ISWR, the RF voltage skyrockets and it just, you know, destroys them. Not only the contact, this contact, the stationary contact and the wipers just totally pull apart. They don't sell replacement parts. This one's been modified anyway. It has epoxy on it. You wouldn't be able to get it apart. So I'll be replacing the entire switch. Oh, here's the replacement switch. Brand spanking new. As you can see comes with a DVD with instructions and a picture with description of what connects to each contact. So states to short some of the connections. I use number 14. It's all copper for that. So I always take my camera out, take a bunch of pictures. Never hurts. You want to take your time. You don't ever want to flow any solder down onto the contacts you'll just if, if you get them on to the contacts you're not going to get it all off even with solder wick and you'll create a high spot so you just want to take your time go nice and slow so what I do is I will loosen that set screw and then I put it all the way to 160 loosen that set screw then I take a picture so I know where all of the connections have landed so when I go to reinstall the new one, they're positioned in the same spot. So I'm gonna go I'm gonna go ahead and do what I said before. I'm gonna take some pictures. I will unsolder everything. I will remove the side panel. It is easier if you remove the load cap, but I'm very precise with my soldering, so I don't need to. It just ends up taking more time and you possibly damage. You can, you know, I don't wanna possibly damage it you can damage it or other parts in the process of taking it out so you know the less you do the better and then I will loosen this nut here which holds the band switch to the wall here okay so I'll be back and uh, we'll go from there see you soon okay all the straps are unsoldered I remove the nut Switch is configured. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and uh, I'll show you it once it's pulled out. Be back soon. Okay, so it's removed. As you can see, the blown apart wiper contact, contact, and then the damaged other one and and the stationary part that it grips is just totally blown apart. So I'm going to clean up all the solder on the connections here. Just want to make sure you don't drip it into the air variable cap on the load side. If you're nervous about doing that, just remove the cap. Just be careful when you take it out. Never assume, when someone has done work to something, never assume that they did everything the right way. Always double check. You know, when you you know as to where the straps are all connected, you know, make sure that you know when you get it all back together, when you're putting it back together, that everything lands where it's supposed to be, where it, you know, that it connects where it's supposed to be, I should say. Um, never ever assume. Okay, so there's the company that made this switch. There's the part number. Okay, so I'll get back to work and I will be back soon.
Yeah, I just wanted to share something else here really quick before I forget. So, I believe it's called the index mechanism. It's not located on this assembly, but actually the input rotary switch. So it's critical when you go to put this back in to have, first off have the contacts in the right spot, you know, the wiper in the right spot. So it's uh, set for the right band but you want the wiper each wiper to actually make contact with the center of each stationary contact this one was set so it was like barely grabbing the edge so you want to have it set right in the center and then tighten up on the set screws and then rotate the band switch back and forth a few times different positions make sure that they continue to grip the center. This is the stationary contact. This is the wiper that grips the contact. You want it in the center. Not the edge, but the center. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back with the completed amplifier. New band switch has been installed. So I cover came off. Like I said before, never assume the person did it the right way. They forgot to make a connection back to the load tuner. The wire was just sitting in there, so it could have contributed to the failure. So now the new one is installed. It's installed properly. All the contacts line right up in the center where the wiper meets the stationary contact. Now it's good to go. I have a trick for you here when the washer falls down into this cavity I just use a, a polarized screwdriver I magnetize it and pull it out and then when I go to put the new one in just take your time and just get it in there get the shaft to come through and then I'll take the eternal tooth lock washer slip it over and then put the nut on the same way get the shaft to stick into the coupler and then I just spin it onto the threads and then you take a half inch wrench and tighten it up so thanks for watching website is right there that's my phone number I also go ahead and I, I still clean it I clean it with the oxy gold I spray the contacts just put a little bit on and I Work it back and forth to make sure the connections are nice and clean. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. 203-892-4119. That's amprepairguy.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Take care.